chemical distribution might not sound like the most environmentally friendly business, but a lot is being done by some companies to improve sustainability. It's not just about moving chemicals from A to B, as we'll hear from my guest today. There's a lot of value added in the middle. Ahead of the World Economic Forum in Davos, let's meet Steve Holland, Chief Executive of Brentag, the world's number one chemical and ingredients distribution company headquartered in Germany. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Steve, welcome to the Business Debate. Thank you, Sarah. So first of all, to set the scene, you're not just a logistics business that moves chemicals from manufacturers to customers. You are adding something in the middle. Tell me about that. Well, you're right. We do have a lot of logistics, but what we actually do is buy products from world-class manufacturers, bring them to our stores, and we take them into our, into our factories. We dilute products, we mix and blend products, and put into packages that customers want, and offer laboratory services and formulations and all sorts of things. So it's, it's quite a complex business. Yes, and you package it up yourselves, don't you? We do, of course. And safety is always your number one priority. And you're not, of course, as you have been quoted as saying, delivering cookies around mm -hmm. the world. You know, some of these are quite hazardous uh, chemicals, aren't they? How do you get that right? Well, you know, I think almost any, any CEO will say to you that safety is the first priority. And absolutely, that, that is correct. And we can all build you know, great equipment and, and invest in the right sort of procedures. But fundamentally, it's about people and people's behavior. And what we try to do is actually get it right down to the, to the, the base level where we have each individual in our company with a personal safety plan. And with that, we have a behavior which goes right through the company, which is safety orientated. And if we think about environmental protection, which is also part of your sustainability sustainability sort of ethos. What are some of the ways that you're promoting, say, reuse and recycling? Well, you'd be very much aware of the, the great plastics debate and all the issues around plastics getting into the environment. And we believe we have a really positive experience in terms of plastics because we use very high performance plastic containers in a recycling circuit where we can use this for four or five years and reduce the impact on the environment quite considerably, very safe and very sustainable. So people return the containers to you? Absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. And distribution is still very local, isn't it? People do value the personal relationships they have with their local manager, but you're global. So how do those two things marry? Well, we try, we try not to be hopelessly local or mindlessly global. And, um, and what we try to do is actually give the local service, which is appropriate for the, for the customer, where they like to have that local contact, someone they know. But also from a global perspective, we can get access to global market leaders in terms of production and the right sort of technology, the right sort of products. And we can bring that to the local market. So it's a real nice blend of actually giving the very best to the customer, but also giving them a local service. And working globally, do you see large differences between different countries, between, say, regulation and cultural approaches? Or is it the same model everywhere? Well, there are differences in, in, in culture, certainly. But in terms of regulation, generally speaking, most people are operating the same sort of levels. And in fact, we apply the same standards throughout the world. Even if the local regulation is of a different level, we apply the world-class standards. And you have this massive range, don't you? You have the chemicals, you have food products, you have all sorts of things that you transport. We do, we do. I mean, we literally apply uh, products into the food industry, into the personal care cosmetics industry, into water treatment, a whole range of products. So you've really got to sort of be experts in lots of different industries. Absolutely type of thing. And China has become really interesting now, hasn't it? Because they used to maybe have had a poor record on the environment, would you say? But now have they gone the other way? Well, I think it's very interesting in China because you'll all be very much aware of the pollution issues that China's had. And what we've seen actually China go from effectively relatively low level of, uh, of regulation to full on. So it's almost going from all or nothing to, to complete adherence to regulations. And we've actually seen the, the Chinese government close facilities down with, with little no Notice if they either they operate to the best standards or they don't operate at all, and you know we applaud them for it. And so you're actually you you've got factories there, you've got uh, plants there which are really at the top standard. Well, it's, it's even better than that. What we've actually got, had to do now is is we've actually now had to build new sites, and with the help of the Chinese authorities, because they want us to be there and set the standards, but they're, and they're prepared to invest with us to get the very best quality of, uh, of safety and performance. And is this something that you roll out to elsewhere in the world that you can kind of take knowledge from one country, apply it to another? Yes, in this case, we're actually taking uh, technology from North America and Europe and actually taking it to China to get the very best that we can in, the, in our Chinese operations. Excellent, excellent. Well, on that note, thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, Sarah.